Hello and welcome to Meet Our Ex Success Stories podcast. I'm host and coach Amanda Lea, and I'm happy to introduce our guest today. Her passion to help others successfully stay low carb is fueled by her personal experience with obesity since childhood. She began a strict ketogenic lifestyle in 2013, and as a result, she's lost over 100 pounds and significantly improved her health. It's so nice to speak with you about your diet success story today, Christy Sullivan. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me here. I really do. It's good to chat with you. It's great to have you. So please start out sharing with us about your diet and health before eating the way you currently do. Wow. So before Kia, I was a mom with, I still am a mom, but I was a mom with two young children. And I, gosh, I had, by the time you pick up all the kids at school and daycare and all the places, there's like a 45 minute drive home. So I was that mom who had like the frozen lasagna, frozen chicken tenders, frozen French fries. If it could be microwaved or pulled from the freezer to the oven, it was perfect for me because then I could, you know, fix the plates quickly. Um, I remember going on a kick. I wanted to be healthier. And I started doing five a day because you know five a day fruits and vegetables and so sometimes I would even do like you know um, canned pears or canned peaches that was part of my five a day and I was like patting myself on the back thinking that I was being the good mom for doing those kinds of things but we had such a busy household I mean I before keto I was finishing my PhD um, working a full-time job had the two young children of course had a husband my husband worked an hour away so he had a commute in the opposite direction that I had and so you follow on to those convenience foods and we use them a lot um I remember breakfast, one of the favorite breakfasts that I would feed the kids would be frozen waffles that I'd warm up and put peanut butter and jelly on them and make a sandwich and half them, like I put them in quarters and say so the kids could share that going to daycare and they'd literally eat in the car on the way to daycare or to school. And that was like, a, and of course I'd eat that too. Um, but that was like a favorite breakfast. So yeah, it was so typical rely on all the convenient stuff uh, because there just wasn't time necessarily. I didn't think there was time to do that. And I also had had uh, reactive hypoglycemia or hypoglycemia. And so I constantly ate and I used to have food um, literally in my work briefcase, in my desk drawers at work, in my purse, in my car, by the bedside table. And I'd eat in the morning, take my pain medicine, eat uh, breakfast or for breakfast, uh, to have a, a, mor a morning snack, have lunch at work, have an afternoon snack. Sometimes I would eat before I left the office because I had the 45 minute drive home. And of course, then as soon as I got home, I was eating and fixing dinner at the same time. And then before bedtime, there was even another snack, mainly because I had to take pain medicine and you had to have more food with that. So yeah, not the healthiest habits, even though I was eating low fat, <laughs> I wasn't eating nearly the delicious foods I'm eating now. Um, I, watermelon, of course, you know, healthy. Um, things that I thought were the right thing, but that were really not right for my body in particular. Absolutely. And wow. So I know exactly what you mean about the snacking. I mean, that's how I was raised. And I never carried a purse without snacks with me. That would be insane, right? How could you, well, you need to be prepared. Um, so what other health conditions were you dealing with um, when you were eating this way? So I have scoliosis and I had significant pain from that, um, pain in my back and my hips, pain that would run down my legs. In fact, in addition to I was taking over-the-counter pain medicine and prescription strength meds, I was getting the, um, the steroid injections in my back um, to try to help manage the pain uh, because I was told, you know, not surgical, we just have to manage the pain. And so yeah, that was sort of the primary medications that I was taking at that yeah, before keto. It seems like it was so long ago when I stopped to think about it. It has been a while for you. So we'd love to hear more about um, how you implement your keto way of eating now. All the yeah. details, how you came to it also would be great to hear. Yeah, so I... <laughs> I had struggled with weight my entire life. I started becoming obese when I was three years old. I remember um, one time we had 
the family had gone and gotten uh, barbecue sandwiches. I grew up in the South, of course. And so I had cried. I was four or five years old, maybe. I had cried because I wanted two sandwiches. And my parents were just mortified that I actually wanted two. But I was constantly hungry. I mean, just constantly. And I remember, you know, going to the fridge, um, especially if like in the summer, I'd stay with extended family members and cousins and aunts and uncles and just being hungry and, and getting cheese from the fridge. And somebody saying, who ate all the cheese? And I knew it had been me. But I was just constantly hungry. And so I'd struggle with weight and it got to be 2013 and I was on the pain medications for my back. I wasn't being the mom I wanted to be or the life I wanted to be because you know, here I am, my husband and I went to a wedding. This is really a huge turning point. We went to a wedding and there were all these women who were even older than I was who were wearing these beautiful dresses that were sleeveless and they were fitted. And I was in this dumpy pink polyester suit that was not appropriate, but was something I could wear, size 24. And, you know, here I am thinking, my husband deserves better than this. I mean, he never complained. He never said anything, you know, bad to me, but it was just like, I felt bad for him. Like he stuck with this. And then my kids, they were young and I couldn't, like, I couldn't keep up with them. I couldn't do things. I was the mom who sat in the car while my husband took them hiking um, on trips. Um, you know, I, yeah, I was always the one taking the picture. I would declare myself the official photographer because I didn't want to be in the pictures. Um, and so I got to the point where I was just like, this isn't, I don't want to live like this. And I had done everything I'd ever wanted to do. I mean, my personality is that if I decide I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it or die try. And that I had the PhD, I had the kids, I had the family, I had the job, I had, res- you know, a well-respected reputation professionally. But the one thing that I had never been able to conquer was my weight. And that, that probably frustrated me more than anything. It's like, I'm smart. I'm capable, I'm determined, and I'm going to tell you, nobody wants to be morbidly obese. I don't care what they say. Nobody wants to live like that, where you have to get specially plus size clothing, where you feel left out, where you literally and figuratively don't always fit in. I mean, you can't go with girlfriends and try on clothes at the same place because they're all putting on their size fours and sixes, and they don't have a 24 in, in your department. You have to go to a different department, and you feel left out when those kinds of things happen. But anyway, so I just kind of got into that breaking point that I'm going to do this. And so I went to a traditional diet, restricting calories, exercising, which I despise. I was doing it because I was going to be, I was going to lose weight. It didn't matter if I was miserable. Like if you, you know, if you lose some weight, you can be thin. Miserable just comes along with it. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. But the first weight, of course, the first week, of course, I lost weight, but the second week I lost nothing, not an ounce. I was eating the low fat foods, I was counting calories, I was working out, and nothing was changing for me. And that's when I thought, man, what is wrong with me? I'm just irretrievably broken. And a friend mentioned Gary Taub's book, When We Get Fat. But what she said to me was, it's not always about the calories. And that was like magic. Like, and when I read Taubes, and, and Taubes doesn't say that calories doesn't count. What Taub says is it's more than that. It's the quality and the nature and the source of those calories. It's about the insulin. It's about blood sugar control. It's all of those things. And so as I learned more about it, I'm reading the book and you know, I had grown up reading, love to read because, you know, when you're overweight, especially one thing you can read, right? And I had all these friends in the books and when I talk about Taub's book, I think about sometimes that was the first time I read a book where I was like the main character, like that character was like me. I wasn't like the fat friend to the super smart sidekick, but I was, I was that character. And when I read that and I said, Taub's is talking, you know, this is me, sorry, contact. this is me. I decided to try it. I'm going to, and there's a, in the back of Taub's book, there's an appendix by uh, Dr. Eric Westman, this no sugar, no starch diet. And you know, Duke University is right up the road from me. And I'm like, well, maybe these two guys know what they're talking about. You know, I mean, nothing ventured, nothing gain, right? And so I'm going to try this. And so within three days, my hunger subs- subsided dramatically. I mean, such that I missed a meal, which had never happened in my life. Um, I was losing weight, which of course was a wonderful part of it. And I just had this energy. And in fact, within the first week or two, people at work were like, your skin looks nice. What are you, are you doing something different? And 
honestly, my skin had changed. And you, you look at these before and after pictures of people who do low carbon keto and they look younger. And that was already beginning to happen before anybody noticed any weight loss. Um, of course, you know, when you're 270 pounds, you have to lose a good 20 or 30 pounds or where people really notice because you're losing it from all over your body. But they noticed that change in my skin and the health. And I mean, that is, if that's not a marker of health, I don't know what is, but the healthy skin. But anyway, that's when I kind of knew that this was going to be the way that I, and then my husband saw the changes in me. He lost weight, even though he did not give up sugary soft drinks right away. If that came later, he was still losing weight. And so then he was on board. And so bringing the family on board made it so much easier. Wow. That's so phenomenal. And honestly, I want to say thank you for you. I, I relate so much to what you said, um, I relate to your children, um, to you mm -hmm. making that choice for your children. I had, my mom was the same kind of mom um, for me growing up. So for you to, to realize you don't want to be the one just taking the picture and you want to go on the hike mm -hmm. with them and, and then making that shift for your whole family, that's huge. So thank you on behalf of all children who are praying for their parents to make that move. Mm -hmm. That's huge. Um, so we'd love to hear more about, about what do you eat now? So what does eating look like for you and, and the frequency and, and do you have difficulty with this way of eating? Um, oh gosh, no, the only thing, no, there's not, the only thing difficult is like, there's too much, too much to make in too little time. I've said that I hope I live long enough to make all the things that I want to make, right? <laughs> I'm afraid I'm on borrowed time. No, um, I think what makes this way of eating easy is because I'm not hungry, because I do feel satisfied. Um, and because I'm happy with the way I look and feel. I mean, that's huge. Um, I can get up in the morning. If I'm not hungry, I don't eat. Um, I'll drink water. I wake up thirsty. And so I'll drink water. And then ideally, for, I start to get hungry around 10 or noon or so. And again, it just depends on my schedule. But what's amazing to me, we were talking about, you know, always having food. What's amazing to me is that I no longer have to be surrounded by food. And I remember the first time I went on a trip after I'd been here for a while. Um, it was like a work trip. And normally I would pack all kinds of food. And so I was starting to get really stressed about it. And I did pack, you know, all the things I would need. And I realized like midway through the trip, I haven't eaten any of the stuff. And it took a while. I mean, it probably took me two years, but I actually can go on a trip now and take nothing. Like I'll fly to Stockholm for a diet doctor for work there and not take any food because I've learned now there's going to be something somewhere, even if it's like a bag of nuts or a bunless burger, like I'm not going you know, to the desert where there's like no, <laughs> no source of food whatsoever. I can survive. You know, I've got to have water. I, I, if I pack anything, I pack water to bring with me. But that was huge for me, that freedom. And what we've noticed with our family, and we go on vacations, you know, it used to be that family vacations were all like planned around the meals. Like you've got to be at this stop at this time and you're going to have breakfast at this time. And then you have to leave this place so you can get to dinner. And it's so amazing when my family travels now, what we tend to do, and we haven't traveled in a while because of COVID, but the last two week trip we went on, what we noticed was that we tend to eat like a, a more of a brunch kind of thing. And then we would eat usually like a, an early dinner because okay, we get hungry and that was it. And so we were maybe eating out two meals a day. And sometimes we'd eat that first meal, like in the hotel or house or wherever we were staying. And then we would eat the one meal out. Do you know how much money a family of four saves uh, when they're not eating out? So not just money, but time. So we were saving time and money. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's so much better. We laugh like our vacations are so much better now because we're not constantly thinking about where are we going to eat or what are we going to eat or what time do we have to be there? Um, so it's been hugely, hugely different. Yeah. It's freeing. It's, I, that's the only way I can describe it when you don't have to travel with a purse full of food or a suitcase full of food. It's a lot more freedom involved. Brilliant. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. That's freedom. So that's definitely one way this way of eating has impacted your life now for sure. And your family's life. Are there any other ways that you would say, I mean, your health changes that you would want to share about this way of, so this keto, is it more of a, um, an animal based keto? I mean, I guess it, it would be with the healthy fats and stuff, but how do you, I, we'd love to hear a little bit more about how you eat, but also about the impacts of this way of eating on your health. 
Well, okay, so I am on no pain medicine now, none, not prescription state, not over, I mean, not over the counter, not prescription, no pain meds. And this is from, you know, gosh, eight years ago, 10 years ago, I was told by a neurosurgeon to build the house so that it's handicap accessible because I would probably be in a wheelchair at this point. And so, yeah, so no medication for pain for my back, which is wonderful. Um, so yeah, the energy, I mean, the things that I want to do is like through, it's so different now. Like I'm older, but I act a lot younger in a lot of ways. Um, it's impacted my life too, just sharing my story with others. I ended up retiring from a full-time job in higher education where I have a PhD to doing this kind of full-time, like helping people through writing books, through my website, through my Facebook group, through Diet Doctor. And so I'm kind of spreading that word going, look, if I can do this, anybody can do this. You can do it. It's easy and it tastes amazing. And I think the thing that people get hung up on sometimes is they think, oh, I, I don't want to cook or I don't have time to cook. And there's, I have this recipe. It's so, so simple. You basically put cream in a skillet, right? A little heavy cream, let it start simmering, crack your eggs and the heavy cream. And you can put like bacon, ham, what if you want meats, whatever, put that in there too. let it cook. The eggs, of course, are sunny side up, right? You can add some thyme or whatever herbs if you want. And when it simmers down and the eggs get like the perfect doneness, like they're still sunny side up, take it off the heat. And I'll be honest. Oh, you can also sprinkle some cheese if you want a little Parmesan or something. It's just delicious. I've eaten this out of the skillet as much as I've eaten it on a plate. It is so delicious because that cream simmers down. It makes this thick, rich sauce and then those eggs and you can break them open if you've got some bacon in there or you've got ham. It's a complete meal. It's absolutely amazing. One egg is enough. Like I usually put two and every time I do that, I'm like, why did I do two eggs? Like this is so filling, um, but it is delicious. And if you don't want to use so much cream, you can mix a little cream with some broth and cook it in that broth, but it is delicious. And it's so easy. Um, omelets are super easily. We do pre-cooked bacon. My husband would not, <laughs> he would not survive without pre-cooked bacon. And he'll grab a handful, um, like literally it's like a bacon bouquet. He'll grab a handful of, of bacon, you know, seven, eight, nine pieces out in the morning. And he literally would eat that with a, uh, going out the door with a cup of coffee on his, his hour commute. So yeah, um, we do... Uh, because I write cookbooks, um, I do some more, I don't know, fancy stuff, <laughs> I guess. I hate to use that word, fancy stuff. I do make desserts. I have a lot of fun making um, imitation foods. And I know that's not something that's really part of the carnivore, carnivore world, but we make ice creams. And part of it for me doing that is so that the kids are not deprived. And so chocolate ice cream, cookie dough ice cream, peanut butter cup ice cream. I do make peanut butter cup candies. I make marshmallows. I make caramel. I make, um, oh gosh, the little uh, turtles, the caramel pecan uh, cluster things. We do that. We have cakes. My daughter for her 14th birthday had an epic ice cream cake. It was a banana split ice cream cake with <laughs> three flavors of ice cream. It's crazy to make. But she loved it. And that's what she asked for. And that's been my whole thing. You can do this if you don't feel deprived. And I think in the beginning, I, I needed those desserts more because I did feel somewhat deprived, especially holidays and celebrations, because you know, you've got to have food. But as we've done this longer, that's not so important to me anymore. But honestly, when I say I cook fancy, there are times when I'm experimenting with a recipe. But nine times out of 10, if you ask my family, we'll do a seared steak, maybe some roasted broccoli with it, and broccoli that I've just put on a, a sheet pan and put in the oven until it turns brown. Um, so simple things like that. We do we do a lot of chicken in my house, and I love to do roast chicken because I can just you know season it, put the whole thing in a pan. The chicken is seasoned, um, and then of course my family has a variety of ways that they can enjoy that. Generally, I eat about two meals per day, and honestly, breakfast is can be sometimes it's just creamy skillet eggs and sometimes it's just like leftovers so um you know if we had fajitas for dinner that maybe fajitas for breakfast i'm a big proponent of leftovers um with the winter we've enjoyed soups um which again i love one pot wonders we can throw everything in the pot and just make one thing at a time and i would say honestly we i would say be kind of normal but I don't know. We don't eat the drive through stuff necessarily. We don't eat the fast food stuff that a lot of families do eat, but we do eat pizza. Um, we have a 
recipe for a cheesy hot dog skillet. And it's like a chili cheese dog without the bun. And everybody loves that. I have to make like a double batch <laughs> when I make those. Um, and so, yeah, we're eating. My daughter called me from school one time and wanted Milano's. And I kind of knew, I guess what had happened. And I said, are your friends eating Milano cookies? And she said, yes. And so by that weekend, I had figured out how to make Milano's and they're pain to make, but it's that same kind of thing, like no deprivation. Like I don't want them to not have um, the foods that they, that they want and that their friends are having. Again, I just need to say thank you because, you know, uh, Definitely, as a carnivore, a lot of us have found that, you know, at first you might think you're going to miss those foods. So keto foods would be the snacks that we would go to most carnivores if you're going to snack. Um, and eventually, like you, you've experienced, we don't need we don't need them after a while. You don't miss them. But it's true that there are people in our lives and kids are part of that. And being able to create a world for them where they don't feel deprived, but at the same time, they're getting nutrient dense food and they're understanding that it can actually help make them healthier as opposed to make them feel sick and that they can come to mom to get those foods. They don't need to buy them processed and made and get the takeout food to get the delicious meals. That's phenomenal. So again, thank you. They're blessed to have you as a mom. Oh, thank you. Over, <laughs> but no, I think you do make a good point. I mean, being able to make that for them because they do learn, I, I can do this myself. I can DIY it and I, and I can do a healthier version of it. So yeah, I think you're absolutely, uh, yeah, I think you're right. And I think it does come under criticism using those things. And I, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I can see the argument either way, but at the same time, this is much healthier and much more nutrient dense than going to the store and buying her a bag of those processed cookies. That and also, I mean, the thing is, is that you're you're creating metabolic, metabolically well children. And the truth is, is we all understand that once you're metabolically well, you could probably handle those things once in a while. If you're already dealing with an addiction, then maybe you need to be an abstainer and never touch those things. If you're already, you know, dealing with many health issues and you need to take away those things so you can get your health, but your children are metabolically well. So letting them have a banana split cake, I mean, that sounds phenomenal. That's a good thing. That's a treat. And that's to understand that food doesn't have to be your enemy. This is not about creating a negative relationship with food. It's about embracing it, but properly, right? right? That's and I think another important thing, when you think about that cake, like it was low carb, but, but it was such a pain to make that it's not something I'm going to make every other week. And the same thing with cookies. If they want chocolate chip cookies, they need to ask me in advance and I'll make those cookies and I'll have them provided for them. But it's not, it's so easy. I mean, otherwise I go to the store and I could buy three boxes and you're going to eat so much more when it's that convenient. But if mom has to make it and she says, you know, this is what I make you, there are 12. <laughs> I'm not making this again. <laughs> then they have to negotiate that with each other. And there is a limit to those things. And we, as we know, the foods, the packaged products have those additives that make you crave more. And so it's not going, not for me, my family, it's not going to be one. Yeah, that bliss factor that they've been working on, getting that perfect uh, savory sweet balance that gets us all addicted. Yeah. <laughs> but like you touched on, that cream and that dairy, that's, that's nature's bliss bliss factor yeah. right there. So, I mean, it's been so super hearing all about your inspiring diet success story, Christy. Um, is there anything that we haven't covered that, about your experience that you'd like to share with our listeners to consider before we let you go? Um, I would just encourage them to share their own stories because you never know who you're going to inspire. Um, you know, I didn't know kind of your background until we started talking a bit about, you know, how that resonated with your mom. And it's so amazing. Like, I honestly, I always tell people I'm nothing special. I'm just that, that overweight person who struggled, who actually was able to figure it out. And by sharing that and letting other people hear that story, then they don't have to struggle. And that's been my biggest goal is that, that the biggest message is you don't have to struggle. And honestly, it's easier than you think. And I always tell people, give it two weeks. Just give me two full weeks of completely 100% on plan. And then you tell me at the end of those two weeks, how you feel. And usually people, it, they're so blown away that, um, that the two weeks isn't nearly enough. <laughs> That's so true. Oh, well, you know what? I guess sharing really is caring. I really like your message and it definitely feels like caring. So before we go, please share with our audience, how can they find and follow you online? 
Oh, um, so I am at cookingketowithchristy.com. That's my website. It's not, I'm working on it. It's a work in progress. You can also find me at dietdoctor.com. I'm a part of the Diet Doctor team, creating recipes, writing articles. I have a five weeks of Keto with Christy if you wanted to give that a try as part of the Diet Doctor program. I also have a closed Facebook group. It's called Low Carb Journey to Health, and we are 203,000 plus, 203,000. I can't get my numbers right. Um, for literally all over the world who support each other and uh, make great recipes and we always talk about how we have all this food like it's so funny most of the posts in the group are like food and success stories success stories and food and it's like wait a minute this is a diet group <laughs> and you've got all these amazing like food photos and then you've got people who are losing weight and and posting their success and how their lives have changed with their loved ones and that's the most powerful thing I never I've, I've been helping people for six or seven years I never ever get tired of a post that begins with you know my hemoglobin A1C was 10.4 and now it's a 5.3 and I've been using your recipes and thank you so much I mean never Never get tired because that is adding life to their um, to their years or years to their life. It's <laughs> it's literally um, giving them more time with their loved ones. So Big it's time. really powerful. The ripples you're causing are enormous. So again, thank, we, thank you. Oh, please, thank you. And we can all do that. Yes. So. Absolutely. I feel totally empowered. Um, having spoken to you, I'm certain that more people feel empowered connecting with you. So thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your diet success story with us today. It's been such a pleasure. Christy Sullivan. Thank you. 